Yeah, I see a question on the chat room. From Mayor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was just uh, uh, a bit confused about your workflow for your Harvard research paper. Yep. So, so how did you convert your scratch to the three D point cloud, and can you elaborate on that procedure? Yeah. Um. So. So basically, the output of the pix to pix, which is again, is a uh, give us a. Uh, um, uh, I think I can show my screen, by the way. Okay, let me open the, uh, okay, I'll do You know what, actually I have a uh, contents, oh, sorry. This is my, my website, <laughs> excuse me. Um, uh, where's my project? Uh, Yeah, found it. So, all the <coughs> presentation board is here. It's online, available. Yeah. So basically, the expected outcome out of the network is it's like this. This is a train image. This output image is going to be same or similar, just like this. Yeah. And then what I did is uh, just like this. Okay. So what I did is here, just remember this one, uh, four by four. Yeah. So we have. Ooh, two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let me try again. Okay. Yeah, I have four by four, uh, three by three. Okay. Four by four. So each image represents the layer of the along the z axis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, make a, some voxel space. And the individual cube interpolated based on this image value. Yeah, so that I'm able to create uh, some 3D voxelized uh, structure. Yeah, I use the monoliths uh, for the processing things because uh, my thesis device is a panadutis. Um, so actually, the result sometimes is like this. So we need to apply some post production, it makes sense. Yeah, this is how I rebuild it out of the uh, image. Is it right answer to, to your question? And, yeah, yeah, it's pretty clear. Yeah, and the other, the other way around is also I have uh, this image. It has a uh, depth, Z depth. Yeah, also with the Z depth, we can re reproduce the image like this. Like this, but this is only one, provide one perspective, yeah. Because we need to process uh, uh, a lot. Yeah, I think, um, yeah. This is pretty much about it. So yeah, you can visit my website and then you can see more information. Yeah, so we have limited time. <laughs> okay, let me. Yeah, can I start? Can I start? Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> so we have a, a one more slide, which is possibly important for you guys because once you calculate something, we need to visualize. Correct. So I think this slide is gonna be useful for you guys in terms of visualization. <clears throat> so I'm gonna quickly uh, sit because we have a limited time here because I have one more, uh, let's say, demo workshop. Yeah, let's say demo workshop, meaning that I'm gonna go through really quickly. Yeah, um, yeah PC is there, so I'm just quickly mention the, what I want to say. So, as I said, we talk about the data structure as a graph, but however, as I said, there's a more other primitive data structures such as string, list, dictionary, or hashtag, things like that. So if you are not familiar with, um, I think um, you are new to computation design, so don't worry about it, just learn one by one and then we can expand the knowledge. So particularly we can decompose the data structure into three, let's say. Um, unstructured data, unstructured data is just like a um, paragraph in Twitter or whatever human, right language. We, we, we can call it like unstructured data. And the semi-structured data is like a JSON or GeoJSON, as I already show you, right? It has a little structure. This is the example, how I rebuild the GeoJSON file as a sort of a, a map here. So we know JSON or GeoJSON has sort of a rule, just like this, it has a, curly brace here, and the inside of a curly brace, we can declare name, let's say this is key, and then value, key and value. This key has the other, let's say nest data set, which is also JSON, yeah. So we can make a more complex data structure as, as, as you need. However, we have a structured data, yeah. I think this is more easy to understand for beginners. It's nothing special, just you can imagine, just like Excel sheet here, it's nothing special. If you save the Excel as CSDP, <laughs> excuse me, it has a, uh, this, uh, it, it, it gives us this kind of data. Uh, CSV means like comma separate value, yeah. So if you open this file in the Rhino environment, you can see this year here, and then comma, mark, mark, model, description, price. Between them, there's always comma because comma is basically representing split the data, right? One line, line, line. So this is basically index. This is actually data. Yeah. So we can parse it into Python and Grasshopper later, okay? So also we have image I already showed you. So particularly the, the GIS world, we have a, let's say, a remote sensing, right? So based on the image, we can reconstruct whatever shape or uh, we can you know, <coughs> extract the data out of the image. <coughs> so <coughs> this is the, let's say, sort of a data file, file format, right? However, in programming, as I mentioned before, we have a very primitive data structure and then we can build whatever uh, data structure as you need as a graph or matrix or let's say pixel map or voxel map or, or mixed data structure. Um, I think uh, you cannot achieve this one smartly without understanding the class. For the programming, we have a different types of uh, paradigm, let's say, you know, um, procedural paradigm, functional paradigm, or object-oriented paradigm. I think uh, uh, the Wu Jae Song, he is actually my friend. He gonna do some agent-based things. He probably take advantage of the, the the power of class. So without the class, we couldn't 
build this kind of complex system, like data exchange and continuous loop, things like that. So object-oriented program is a really important paradigm for the build your um, um, computational solution. Uh, in the first lecture, I saw you, you guys the, some of the diagram, the tree diagram of the CAD system. So this is the, uh, I actually implemented uh, based on the object-oriented programming paradigm, just like this. So, for example, um, I, I don't like the, uh, the picture floating around my screen. Anyhow, um, uh, where am I? Okay, class here. This is the, the example of TypeScript, but Python is going to be much more easier. But the beauty of a class is basically we can abstract something anymore, right? This is sort of an abstract class. You know what, there's no animal in the world. There's no tangible animal. Animal is a very abstract keyword. But we have a cat, a dog, like a concrete implementation of an abstract class, right? There's no human, yeah? Can you bring, if you have a human? There's no human, but there's an NJ, Namju. We are like a, like a tangible instance against the, the uh, abstraction of the human. You guys get my, my point, right? So we declare this kind of abstraction and then make some concrete things because human, animal, animal has a function like eat, work, right? Every animal has eat and work. So we can de declare this kind of function in the higher level, correct? And when you create the actual concrete class, we can, we can inherent and then we can implement it in that scope. Don't worry about it, even if, in case you don't understand. Just, just uh, get the, the sense of the high level understanding. Yeah. It's almost impossible. Even for me, it takes several years to understand correctly, to be honest. So i am just dropped all the important issues that you need to learn in the future, yeah, within the time. So once you understand the, the class, we have uh, um, uh, you need to understand the design pattern. I think, I think this is really uh, higher up, I mean, very advanced version of architecture. So there's a golf design pattern, which is, uh, let's say, one-on-one -on -one, uh, things for the software architecture. Uh, I'm not expecting you guys to dive into that one, but just, you know, good to know, yeah, to communicate with other people. So this is how you uh, create the design pattern. When I say pattern, it's more about like hierarchy and inherence, things like that. So I'm not going to talk about this one deeper. So using this, <coughs> sorry, using this concept of class, we can actually build our own data structure. When I say data structure, you can think about graph or pixel, voxel, but at the same time, Geometry itself is a graph structure, a data structure. Let's think about the vector here, okay? What is a vector? Vector is has a, I mean, they basically, everyone knows vector has a three elements. Individually, you know, represent along the, ax, uh, the individual axis, such as x and y, z axis, right? So, how can you implement it? Using the class concept, I declare the class, yeah? And then we can declare the x, y, z variable inside of this class, correct? So that you can access like this, x or y or z. Yeah, don't worry about it. This is TypeScript, just understanding concept. So basically we create the class and the inside of this class, we resolve three different numbers. This is the point what I'm trying to make. Not only that, but also we can resolve, say, other data structure inside of the vector, such as color, right? What else do we have? Maybe connection, yeah? If I connect two vector, it becomes line. Does it make sense, right? If it has three, vector, and then closed, they become triangle, yeah? Let's go to the color, same as vector. We have RGB, 
data. Also, we have a false color here that we implement in the, our product, I mean the network analysis tool. This is color, right? It's nothing special. Again, I declare class called color, and then R, Z, G, B, A, which is alpha, right? And then it has its own function. So think about it. I'm human, yeah? I have a property, just like RGBA. I have a property, my name, my height, my weight. This is my property. However, no, no, at the same time, we have a function, which is working, sleeping, eating. This is like a behavior. So I'm talking about the behavior and property which belongs to particular object, All right? Just, just grab the concept, yeah? And also we have a line here. As I mentioned before, line has a two point, right? If you go inside of this point, this is a point, point, I'm oh, sorry. This is a point that I use here. This is a point, right? Line has two point, which is parameter or property. And this point has a vector and color. Can you draw some mental structure in your brain? So for example, what I'm saying is, I have a line, yeah? And then I have two points, right? And then each point has a vector and then color. Vector and color. Can you see this is graph? You can see also tree, tree structure. You can, you can whatever build based on your, uh, what you want, basically. Okay. Let's jump quickly. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this one deeper. Okay, so now we have a data. So I think this is a very clear example. So I have a data and then in order to visualize the data, for example, we need a coordinate system. So Rhino, so this Maxwell SketchUp, it has a Cartesian coordinate system. So we literally visualize it, right? However, what if we have a map here, for example? So let me give you an example. Where are you? I think this one. Yeah. So can you see this? The red color is my mouse position. However, the green color is basically process based on the projection. In this case, I use the, uh, I don't know the name of projection, but if you click it, you can change the, change it, uh, okay. Uh, double click, yeah, <laughs> and it's double click to change the projection. So what I'm saying is, as long as you have a data, and then we have a visualization platform, whatever map or 3D environment, we need to project to visualize something. This is the one example for the mapping, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think the green value and red value, the number is identical. Number is exactly the same, but the projection is different. That's why we are seeing it like this. So in order to project your data, there's two really important concepts, remap and interpolation. I think that the remap is most important. Yeah. The remap is nothing special. It's just like a, a re, let's say, um, uh, how can I say, um, you guys normalization, right? Whatever number mean max, we can fit between zero and one. This is example of Linap. The Linap is a basically project from one domain to the other domain, okay? If you have a, a okay, so you can process whatever things in, inside of the computation algorithm. And in order to visualizing, for example, you have a landscape, you have a network, you have a coordinate system. So you, you need to project this number to that world. In this case, the RIMA is very useful. I think this is uh, one of the clear example. So think about it. One is a thousand, right? And one, one thousand and one hundred and five hundred. I literally visualize like this. 
So think about it. This is like a less than 500 pixel. Yeah. So maybe 1,000 is a go around the, the, over the, the my screen. Yeah. So if I remap here. Come on. Yeah, see, all the data, all the data uh, by maintaining their relationship, they shrink and then fit in that coordinate system, right? I think uh, uh, I have been engaged in visualization domain uh, around 10 years, but I believe the green app is super important. Yeah, believe me. <laughs> yeah, but limited amount of time, I'm just skip it. And then interpolation is pretty, um, let's say, interesting term. So we use decay and gravity, right? This is all about the projection, right? So for example, if I, this is the time axis. This is a, let's say whatever value that you can apply. So here, see this? Uh, the time is a good constant speed, but the, we project. And then the Y value is goes slowly and then faster and slowly, right? This is a slowly then faster. This is the, all about the, the interpolation. I mean, the interpolation is a pretty um, interesting and useful function. You can not only use uh, just uh, make some animation, but also you can use the data interpolation. When you try to um, uh, train the network, like a machine learning or deep learning network, most important thing is that you need to fit the dimension of the matrix. Otherwise, the network is not working. So in this case, um, actually, I have a one um, uh, cache uh, the example like a um, smart drawing that I implement on our product. Uh, but I have no example right now, but I, I create a video so you guys can see the video. Um, but the, in the video, what I'm trying to say is, uh, there's uh, some screen here. So I draw some shape and then it automatically detect circle and then it gives us perfect circle. And if I draw, I mean, it's nothing special, but just focusing on the, the, the process of the, uh, the, um, um, the place where I use the interpolation, and then I draw the rectangle. So what I, uh, what I uh, train in that scope is I use the, the, the uh, dot product, like uh, the um, vector difference, yeah. So in this case, the vector difference is uh, nothing. The, 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 the number is become like a zero. And then I suddenly change my direction. And then around this area, the vector is going to be one. Things like that. Zero, 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 one. Zero, 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 one. Zero, 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 one. In this pattern, we can mimic, oh, this is a rectangle. But circle is around 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Pretty, you know, smooth number. We can assume, uh, assume that this is circle, yeah? In this context, what if I draw circle in a two way? The first way is draw like this, yeah? The other way around, I draw circle like this. I'm keep drawing half circle, and then the other half circle goes quickly. Yeah, in this, in this context, think about the vector matrix. Yeah, it's really hard to uh, um, uh, convert. So in this, in this case, also we can use the interpolation. Also the way of interpolation for the machine learning, for the data set, also image, image wise, there's a different types of uh, the interpolation things. Even in Photoshop, if, if you in, uh, resize the uh, image, they ask us, what kind of interpolation do you want to do? Yeah. Anyhow, this is for your few information. Um, okay. Okay, I'm jumping. So this is a, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the Gastel. Gastel is an uh, important guy who give us uh, some, let's say, the visualization principle. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, let's say, um, um, the insightful um, guideline. One is the proximity and similarity and closer. So this is a sort of a, like a, um, the lens while you visualizing your information or data. This is a, so become sort of a guideline. So also I have uh, the other uh, information for you guys, like a built-in visual space here. Uh, the guy is a cartographer and 
he made it really uh, important, um, like I, saw, I say, <laughs> infographics for us. Um, you know, for the visualization, we usually dealing with point, <clears throat> point and line and the area. Yeah. I mean, the mesh is actually we can consider as an area. Yeah. So this is the effectiveness. I can go down. This is the example. How you visualizing? So we have a, a nominal data, ordinal data, and quantitative data. Quantitative data is uh, using this entity to visualize. This is the most efficient way. But the nominal data is actually nominal data is like such as um, you know color or name of fruit. There is no particular like a grouping, right? So it's harder to visualize it. But at least you know we have a uh, some guideline. You know, I think this is a good um, starting point, like a one on one concept for visualization. So I just leave uh, this one to you guys. And then, the, and then <clears throat> here is a, the graphical integrity concept. There's a lot of uh, graphical uh, you know, misconception here. So for example, like um, let's say, this is the, the all the life factor. So even if the number, if you take a look at uh, this graph closely, this uh, graphic doesn't necessarily and doesn't clearly doesn't clearly represent the number. This is how the mass media play with the public. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of uh, um, lens that you can use, such as life factor here. I think it's the ink ratio. Yeah. And then junk chart. It's nothing special, just to get rid of some unnecessary ink stuff. Graphical integrity. Yeah. So, can you see this? So, if you feel like, I think uh, this graph has a 3D chart. This ink is actually become part of this area so that people can see, oh, that one is bigger than other one. It's like an you know, illusion stuff. I mean, there is a, some one-on-one uh, -on -one principle. So please take a look at if you are interested in visualization. And I recently I found this video. This is really fun, really fun. Uh, I recommend you guys to see how mass media play with um, the, uh, the chart. Yeah. It appears to capture the state of each nation's battle in the global war against this the is, virus. This is a very funny. I'm not going to play. They usually talk about uh, how mass media exaggerate the data and then uh, how we, you know, how to lead the, the, the graph without the, uh, you know, losing the feedback. Yeah. Uh, and this is the other interesting you know, link. Uh, there are you know, 45 ways to communicate to different quantities. Yeah, I like the name, the, the title. So there's two numbers, 75 and 42. There's a different way of comparing two quantity. Yeah, interesting, right? We have shader and shape and icon and length and, and you know, the coordinate system and angle. Yeah. Interesting, right? Using the frequency and speed. Yeah, I think this is the good for you guys to make some brainstorming um, in terms of visualization. And this is the very, very famous image where data visualization guy talk about visualization. This is the diagram that uh, produced by Nightingale. She is a nurse in the UK, right? At the time, the UK were, took the war against Russia, I guess. So, um, but many people at the time thought about, you know, the, the battle actually caused death of people. But the Nightingale uh, revealed an insight here. So what, he, what she said that um, the death of people, the, 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 the uh, the army in the in the in the world is not because of the battle, but because of the the um, let's say um, the sanitized problem. Yeah, because the disease outbreak at the time. 
So all the soldier is they actually death not because of the battle, but because of the you know um, the outbreak. Yeah. So the reason he she successfully made this um, visualization is because not she she's not just a nurse. She's an administrator of the UK, you know, local government. She has her own domain and opinion how to read the fact based on the data. This is what I'm trying to say in the, at the end of the visualization slide. So domain knowledge is really important, yeah? And then you need to analyze and the repeat, repeated measurement. This is, this is like a repetitive process for the visualization. Speak with data, pushing it with visual insight. This is my world. Uh, yeah, beautiful is important. Correct. But the most important thing is that rather than beautiful, you need to pursue the meaningful. Then I'm pretty sure the beautiful is going to become sort of an outcome or byproduct or your, your meaningful visualization. So there's a link. Please go to the link if you are more into visualization. Okay. Yeah, we, <laughs> we visit individual uh, uh, material here. Now I am going to go to Rhino Grasshopper uh, to make some graph um, workshop, let's say demo. <laughs> demo is, I think, better term. Okay, uh, here, um, you can download the Grasshopper uh, definition here. Inside of the Grasshopper, uh, Grasshopper definition, there's a multiple series of the graph of, uh, Python compound here, yeah? Let me open the first compound. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm show you how we need to, how we can build graph from scratch. Yeah, excited or not? <laughs> great, great. So this is the Lino syntax. I import Lino grasshopper syntax because I, I, I use the Lino. There's no way, uh, there's no reason why I didn't take advantage of the grasshopper API, yeah? And then this is JSON, just don't worry about it for now. But the most important thing is that I declare class. This is a syntax you guys need to follow. Class, name, and then colon, yeah. And then the death means define something. So this is the minimum definition to declare a class. You need to declare a class and then name and then uh, quotation, uh, not quotation, uh, a column. Yeah, I'm confused. <clears throat> and then define an init underbar to underbar in the init and underbar. This is the syntax. And the self is also a syntax. I'm sorry, too many syntax. And then I open the ID, which is parameter, and X, Y, Z. Yeah, that's why I create the object out of this class. Zero is goes to ID, X is goes to X, two, Y, three, Z. The self is a sum of syntax. Self means indicating self, self, themselves. Okay, great. Um, and then what I did is uh, I create the property inside of this class called ID. And then I save this ID inside of this class. Correct. And then pose, position. I create the list which is vector because I have uh, three elements, X, Y, Z, representing each individual axis. Yeah, and then I also create a G which I will add connectivity, yeah? So, <clears throat> also I create a two JSON because in, at the end of the day, I wanna export this graph to the data, like a file, CSV file, okay? And then I use this uh, JSON, uh, let's say, uh, library. So this is the pattern. If you guys are interested in, visit this uh, link. So the result is like this. I create a node, node, and then, I mean the parameter is ID, 
one, two, three is X, Y, Z, right? And then I use the two JSON as output of A. So now I can see this result. Yeah. So I'm, I'm keep saying, um, even if you understand, uh, I think uh, you need to type. It's a different story. You know how to snowboard, right? Maybe it takes like three minutes. Yeah. But no one can snowboard in the, in the snow in action. Yeah. Without practice. Okay. The second thing is this. Uh, yeah, same as before, we have an identical class previously, and then I get the random value, right? And then inside of this for loop, this is syntax. So let me interpret. Okay, inside of this scope area, scope area, I want to repeat 100 times starting from zero up to 99, because we are starting from zero, right? So I can uh, generate a random number, because a random number is always a normalized number between zero and one. So I multiply 10, meaning that I want to get the number between zero and 10, right? What if I do like this? You need to imagine uh, this kind of calculation quickly. Yeah, so can you explain what is the expected result? So expected result is, I want to populate point minus x5 plus x5, y x5 minus x plus x, z minus x, uh, minus five plus five. Yeah, so I, I'm, I want to, create the box, the box, yeah? Because to think about it, we get between zero to one, and I, I minus 0 0.5. So the numbers domain is always, always minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, right? Because I minus, and then I multiply 10, right? So this is five, minus five, and five, yeah? So I can create a cube. So nothing special. Just just imagine. Just uh, whenever you uh, typing typing the number in your equation, you need to practice to imagine in your, in your brain. You need to render your brain. This is the I think a really important aspect for computation design. Um, so now you can see here like this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, we have a node, same as before, but I have a print function, but no worry about it. But you, you have an edge, right? But edge has node one and node two. Because node has multiple edge, like 10 edge, 100 edge, doesn't matter. But edge has always has two node, start and end, that's it. So that's why we have two node to create the edge. Right? So I create the one node here, the other node here, and then I create the edge out of these two nodes. Correct. So that's why we are see this line here. Um, same as before, we have a node, we have an edge, and then I create the lambda, yeah? So inside of this random loop, I create the node first. Yeah, 100 node. Yeah, and the individual 100 node is goes to that list. We basically store 100 node inside of this variable for the nodes here. And then I'm gonna loop through nodes and then I add them one by one to create the edge because I use I and I plus I. Yeah, so just think about it. I have a add node here. Oop. 
node 0, node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, right? So node 0, uh, because we replace the, uh, the, the number in order by i, right? So I, in the first loop, i is going to be 0. In the second loop, i going to be 1, 2, 3 in order. So I use the plus number 1 uh, sort of uh, equation. So I'm going to create the, uh, the edge here to there, here to there. And because I'm always plus number one, plus i, yeah? See, i and plus i plus number one, yeah? So that I'm able to create uh, this crazy randomness um, edge here. So um, this is the distance base. So I create a multiple, like a point, and then within distance, create the edge, yeah? If I increase the, create, uh, the distance, and then the number of edge going to be sky local, right? So this is the things, yeah? If the distance is less than this tolerance, then we want to create the edge, yeah? Keep increase the complexity. So now we have uh, this kind of very evenly distributed points, right? And then I input the point, and then what I did is the same as before, node and edge, and then I create a graph class. The graph class can contain multiple nodes, multiple edge at the same time. And then I keep looping, yeah? The first one is to connect all the nodes in order, yeah? <laughs> this is the, we create a point randomly, however, it has an order. So I just follow the order in, in order to create the edge, okay? This is the first operation. I connect it out by con press control slash, and then this one. Uh, I think that, that one is uh, give us the sort of a clarity node, okay? Yeah, uh, just jump because we have limited time. Uh, yeah, graph. So in this case, we have a line here, yeah? And then we have a node here and edge here and graph class. Inside of the graph class, we have a build edge function. So in, order, uh, in terms of the implementation, I create the graph object out of this class. And then I use the build edge function. And then I in, in inject this line to that function. So all magic is going to happen inside of this function. So let me explain. So this is the line. Yeah. I want to ask first line, uh, the, the, the point, uh, the, like a, the line has an end point and st uh, the start point, right? So this is the, how we extract the, the end point and start point by Python. And then I loop through. And then if there's a not duplicated, and then add them, things like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, we will we will talk about differ in the workshop session. Yeah, the goal of this uh, demo is just uh, give us a higher level understanding, just quick description of the individual points, components. So uh, here we have a graph here, and. Um, Important thing is here we can give us um, okay. Let me drag this picture. We have a start point here, the end point, right? And then this is the edge between start and end. So, for example, if I click these two points, click right button. And then click on so that we are able to manipulate it expressly. I can move like this. You follow, right? So this is all about the propagation and back propagation. I will go to talk about propagation uh, as a last subject on, on, my, on my lecture here. So um, once you build all the graph, um, This is the forward propagation, and this is a backward propagation. 
So what the photo propagation is, we have point edge. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, give us some weight. In this case, we can consider is a distance, right? Maybe two, three, two, four, three, two, one, maybe two. Okay. This is a, the cost is a, the, the calculated cost is gonna be zero because if this is starting point, right? So we add them. So it's two. Let me change the color. Yeah, it's two. Right? This is number one, and then two. I'm gonna calculate three, right? And then this is two, and the distance is two. It's gonna be four, right? So four is a higher number than three, right? So we don't, we don't, we, we don't want to override because this is the, the shortest path. And then two and three, number five, right? And then uh, five, three, eight, correct, right? This is two and two, going to be four, Four is smaller than four, so we just remove this five, uh, eight, and then we just four. We can do that. And then this is three, and then four, and the seven. Seven is higher than higher than four, so we just simply ignore it, right? So now we have the, the visual for the fro for the propagation. Let me let me uh, maybe I can use black. This is a zero. This is the, after for the propagation, we are able to get this exact number. I mean, this is the um, fixed number because we travel all the network, right? And four, and this is two, this is uh, three, one, okay? We do propagate from the uh, start point. This is, uh, let's say, destination. So I'm starting from here, right? So I'm starting from here. I'm willing to take this path because the e, the two is uh, smaller than three, right? This is the shortest path. This is the shortest path. This is a backward propagation. Yeah. This is the happening the behind the scene for the network. Let me say um, the best algorithm that I described before. So <laughs> a little complicated. Um, yeah. Bear with me. Yeah. Let's talk about um, in detail in our workshop time. Okay. So I think we had only one hour, right? So um, I think I'm done. Um, then after 10 minutes or five minutes break, and then Dr. Jonghyun gonna describe two more interesting section. One is the, uh, how you guys uh, measure and survey the pedestrian uh, volume uh, on site here. And then she is going to introduce um, post COVID-19 urbanism topic, which is, um, let's say, possibly become one of you guys' um, um, research project. Yeah. Any question? Uh, Namju, can I give a quick feedback? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I see uh, that your intention is to go wider so that we are aware about each and every concept and terms related to this uh, philosophy. So, uh, but uh, what I personally felt was there was so much information overload that uh, I can't remember like uh, what are the terms to focus on to get my project done because I, I really like how you explain the logic of each uh, component. But if I need to right now, if I need to start making my own component, I can't because there were so many syntax going on. Yeah, so I think if uh, uh, the next step would be for me to go and explore it, but uh, if if you uh, can identify what is one thing which uh, a student should remember at the end of this whole uh, four hour lecture and like having like more focused on those components. So at least we know how to model that on our own. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your concern. Um, yeah, so basically uh, the way we designed the, this course is basically to compose uh, two sections. One is the lecture and the other one workshop. So lecture two is I, we try to uh, give you guys uh, uh, information as, as much as we can because we're going to please this video you know, online so you guys can, uh, whenever you need, visit the video and then take the um, uh, course. But 
some is a very and quickly uh, a jump to um, other section. So in this case, I, I mean, if you visit my medium, there's a, the extra link and then also video. So I highly recommend you visit because um, we have um, uh, different sort of focus things. And in the workshop, um, the, the, the goal of my workshop is first of all is to get, get sorry, <coughs> sorry, get familiar with the, the NNA tool first. Because as I mentioned in the very, very first presentation, understanding network is the most essential goal. Yeah. The second thing is um, uh, the, using the NNA network, you guys can set up your own research goal. The last one is the Python to, to hack the, 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 the um, network. I mean, I talk about propagation, back propagation very quickly. I'm for sure it's really hard to understand. I'm not expecting you guys, but at least you guys get the concept of how we calculate. So now you can see the uh, NNA component, and then maybe you guys better position to understand what I'm saying, right? So based on people, individual people has different starting point, different expectation, different learning curve. This is, I think this is our challenge. So that's why we designed the course like this. Jonghyun, do you have any, any comment? Yeah, so we actually, we kind of discussed a lot about the, how we uh, the, the design this program. So during this um, like public lecture, we just try to do overview um, uh, as much as we can. And we just want to introduce like kind of all the kind of uh, main key things will be first, but like as your friend, you know, we try to introduce to you uh, as much as we can. And also NJ's YouTube channel, if you wanna know about more details, you just visit his YouTube channel and uh, you can watch uh, some videos. So um, if you have any kind of specifications or if you wanna know, have a kind of any kind of concerns just, or if you just want to learn about some kind of keywords, which is not really familiar to you, just uh, talk to us. Maybe NJ can uh, let you know his video link and then you just do uh, yeah, through it. And, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you have a very personalized question with all your interest, I think that I couldn't meet kind of, um, you know, things in the public lecture, right? So these are sort of information is necessary. I want to, you know, um, bring to you guys. So uh, that's it. And then you have a question, then we can talk. Yeah, I can, I can try to um, meet your expectation or whatever you want. You can, you can push the boundary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just want to clarify that the lecture is ton of valuable content and it's great. I'm just sharing a student's perspective that there might be sometimes that after 30 minutes, there's so much information that it's difficult to concentrate what's going on and keep track of everything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is our goal. <laughs> yeah, giving all the possible relative information to you guys and then selectively you can digest as time goes by. Thank and you. Can you, can you. Can you access Slack as well? Or, yes? Can you access our uh, uh, Slack? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, sorry, yeah. I, I'm, in, I'm in unit four, so I, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's... So, yeah, let's have a break. <laughs> yeah. Let's have five any, minutes. Any more break. questions or any feedback? Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. See you in 10 minutes. Okay, then let's get together in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah.